ZO2 is almost out and it finally made layers awesome. Let's have a look. Hey, Vlad here from devinsideview.com. Welcome to another video. ZO2 is almost out, but here's the thing. When ZO came out, it very quickly became polarizing. Nobody liked it. People either loved it or hated it. But there was this one thing that even the most loyal ZO fans couldn't get themselves to like, and it was the layers. About a year ago, I made a free course here on YouTube about ZO, and I spent almost half of it explaining this weird has and this pattern with a package and an object inside of it and a type alias inside of it and a trade inside of it, etc, etc. I'm very glad to report that all of that stuff is gone. Let me show you, right after the message from our sponsors, which is you. I don't have as much time as I used to to dedicate to this channel, but with your help, I could pay for an editor who could save me some of that time. I'd much rather spend this time answering your questions on Discord or hang out with you during live streams. Please consider supporting this channel. There's many of you and only one of me, so every dollar adds up. Thank you. I'm recording this video on June 9, 2022, and as of right now, RC6 is out. So some of the things that I'm going to show you might change a little. What I have prepared for you today is an over-engineered Hello World version of an application with ZO2. Uh, we're using Scala 3. I also have a version in Scala 2. And I've written it entirely without layers. And we're going to add layers on top and you're going to see how trivial it is. There's no has, there's no, there's no pattern at all, essentially. All right. It's kind of weird to start this video with a bug, but let me show you a quick bug. Okay. So I'm going to run this application. So I'm going to go into SBT. And uh, before I'm going to walk you through this thing, let me actually uh, open the main file. Okay. Which looks like this, right? It's just object main extends ZO app default default means that there will be no parameters to this uh, application i believe actually i'm not super sure so as of right now i'm actually going to commit it out okay and i'm going to do this typical you know at main or was it like this at main def main uh equals you know print lime uh hello world all right so i'm going to run this application so i'm going to do uh main run like this so this is a uh multi-build project all right so let's wait a couple of seconds there we go. Okay. So as you can see, it did not exit SPT. Okay. So I can run it again. I can run it again. I can run it again. However, for some reason, and I don't believe that this is intended behavior, is that if I actually run this application, then for some reason, it will actually exit from SPT. And I have no idea why that is. Uh, maybe it is somehow related to Java 17. Uh, but uh, as you have seen, you know, the real, the normal Hello World actually didn't exit. So I don't know. Uh, for this reason, we're actually going to use Bloop today because for Bloop, it doesn't matter that the application actually exits. All right. So let me walk you through this thing. It's super trivial. Uh, so this is a multi-build. We have the core with our business logic at the top. We have a way to deliver this application, which is via the terminal or the console. And the core is going to need something to talk to, which is Google. It's not real Google. It's just, you know, it's just some fake data. Okay. And then the main is for dependency injection. Okay. So let me just quickly uh, run you through the code so that you can see that there are uh, no layers inside. Uh, it's it's just like a very, very trivial ZO application, okay? So we begin like this, right, with a program. What is a program? Well, it's over here, right, over here. So we are in main, as you can see, okay? So over here, I usually assemble my entire application, right? I usually call it program. And by the way, we're in Scala 3, so we have top-level definitions. Uh, usually, I would have, you know, an object program, and, uh, you know, it would, it would look like... Um, it will look like this, all right? And this thing over here would be called make, right? And it would be like this, okay? So this sometimes happens, right? So usually it would be like this, okay? But since it's Scala 3, you know, I left it like this, okay? So um, this is just a program, and over here I assemble all of my use cases. In this particular case, we have only one use case. So I'm doing use case 1, and then again, another top-level definition, right? So if this was Scala 2, I would do some like di.make, right? So this would be an object, and this would be either a method or a lazy val. These days, I'm making everything a lazy val as, as long as it doesn't, need, it doesn't require any parameters, okay? So make assembles this one use case, okay? So as you can see, it's some controller. It needs some boundary. It needs some Google, and also the controller needs the console, okay? So the way this works is that... Uh, there is a trait called controller. So if we go there, okay? So this trait is in the delivery portion of our application, right? And because it's a terminal application, like whenever we call run, it's basically something that's going to print stuff out, maybe ask for the user input, and, you know, the console in Zio, it can fail with an I.O. exception, 
Okay, so um, simple trade. Notice that it is not in the package use case one, which is not super important for this video, but but still. And for some reason in Scala three, I can still not go to the implementation, so I need to go back uh, to DI and I need to go to the control implementation. Okay, so essentially the way this works is that I call this controller because it's not it has nothing to do with MVC. I call it controller because I imagine like a game controller. Whenever I press a button, it calls something in the core of my application. It has to go through a boundary. A boundary being just a trade. Okay, so there's a uh, well actually we can go to the control implementation first. As you can see, it wants the boundary and it wants the console, which is the Zio console. Okay, all it does over here is it constructs a controller. This is a Scala three feature. The, this type over here is inferred, so we don't need to do this. Okay, it will be inferred for us. Over a lazy val ran, we just print out my hyphens and then in the end as well. And then we go through the boundary to the core of our application. We're asking it if Google has an even amount of pictures of cats, and then a boolean comes out over here, right? And then we just print it out. Okay, same thing for the dogs. Very trivial application. All right, so let's go to the boundary like this. Nice and easy, very tiny trait. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to the boundary implementation, which is somewhere else. And the implementation is also very trivial, right? So the implementation requires Google. As already mentioned, it's not real Google, but it, you know, Google is just a trait and it just asks it count pictures off some topic. And this is like a trace of a business logic. Okay, so. Uh, Google is a simple trait. Let's go in there. Nothing spectacular. Count pictures of topic. Gives an integer. Well, wrapped in Zio, but you know, you get the idea. And the Google implementation is not real Google. It just succeeds with Zio. And if the topic is, is cats, then it's going to be 1337. Otherwise, it's going to be 1338, right? And as a reminder, in the boundary implementation, right? If it's even, then it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false, which is why we see over here, first it returns false, then it returns true. What is here? Why does it look like it's as it's not saved? I haven't touched anything. Okay, so this is it. This is pretty much the entire application, and the interesting part is going to be over here. This is the DI portion, right? So this is how we uh, construct a controller. Now, very often with uh, you know with either tagless fine or with effectful programming, uh, sometimes what you assemble is an actual controller, and sometimes it's actually wrapped in an app. And recently, I decided that I would actually wrap everything, even though I actually don't need it, because sometimes you create some mutable state inside, you know, with an atomic graph or whatever. Then you're forced to, uh, you know, instead of returning your controller, you're you're forced to return a Z of a controller. So I kind of made this decision that I always want to return a Z, okay, or you know, or an F, you know. So I'm gonna just uh, succeed, uh, you know, go to the bottom, uh, go like this, right? Okay. Like this, okay. So now make return to zero. You know, was like any nothing controller. So it's pretty much a UIO of a controller. And because of this, we need to go over here. Like over here, you would usually have a full comprehension anyway. This is why we're going to go with a flat map. Really, not a big deal. Okay. So what I'm going to show you today is a version of this make. Uh, which is going to be built by using the layers. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rename this to make with constructors. And over here, we're going to go like this. We're going to go lazy val make. Okay. And we're just going to say zero dot. Okay. And we're going to have, you know, a multi-line expression over here. So we're going to say service and which service are we trying to construct? Well, controller. And as you can see, like GitHub Copilot actually suggests, you know, this controller dot service from this, you know, from this, you know, zero one pattern, which we absolutely don't need anymore. Okay. So we just go like this. Okay. Now let's look at the type of this. I actually haven't looked at the type of this. It could be very horrible. Well, it's not. Okay. So it's something that requires a controller and it returns a control. Okay. All you need to do now is just go over here and say provide with an empty parameter list. And look at this gorgeous, gorgeous error message. Look, please provide a layer for the following type. <laughs> oh man, my laptop started overheating. And if you have seen my streams, this started happening recently and I have no idea why. So I just opened the window. So if you happen to hear some cars, apologies. Remember those wild error messages, like half a page long that, you know, uh, you give me like, like you've, been, you've given me a has with like these three types, but I wanted the one with like these four types. Like all of that is gone now. Okay, so all we need to do is literally please provide a layer for the following type, okay? So the way we do this is, again, we don't need to have, you know, some special package with some object inside, with some type alias inside. Has is gone. It doesn't exist anymore, okay? All we need to do is we go over here and we say, okay, well, we need to create a layer. Well, we already have a function that creates it, so let's go from function, okay? So we need to create a layer for the controller. We have the controller implementation, and we're just going to call make like this, okay? So this is uh, add expansion. Right, and um, uh, there's one brace too much. Okay, so this is add expansion, and if you're in Scala two, uh, you will need to do this, right? So because in Scala two, it doesn't automatically expand. Okay, so uh, maybe you should do it in such a way somehow that um, I don't think I can do this. Basically, uh, we we took we have taken this one, right? Controller implementation dot make. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to say the file is going to look and say, okay, well, the controller needs a boundary and it needs the console. Okay, so basically we need to do this boundary implementation dot make. Okay, so I'm going to like copy this line and go like this. Okay, so this is going to be boundary implementation dot make. Okay, and we also need the console. And uh, obviously there is already a layer uh, for console in Zio, but for now I'm going to go like this, right? So in Zio, it's actually called uh, console dot console live, which is it's just an object, right? So we're going to jump in there in just a second. So we're going to jump in there, right? It's just an object extends console, which is exactly like I called mine, you know, boundary implementation, control implementation. In Zio, it's called console live, okay? And obviously there is already a layer we're going to use in just a second. And now it says, this is an object, okay? And because we're doing from function, we need to do, uh, well, it's a function with zero arguments like this. And now it says, okay, well, Google implementation is the only thing that is uh, that is missing. And by the way, this is a uh, metals not clear, not clearing the, um, the diagnostics, all right? So again, not clearing the diagnostics. I'm not sure why metals keeps doing this. By the way, like this error message, like I haven't managed like, I believe even once to see it really well uh, inside of metals, right? Like Bloop sees it, right? Uh, well, actually it doesn't, like as you can see, like Bloop doesn't, well, I don't know, somehow like Bloop over here sees it, probably like shows you like only the first line or something. In any case, it says, okay, Google implementation is the only thing that is missing, okay? And as you can see, we have like Google implementation.make, which is a lazy val, which is why we need to do this. I'm just gonna go to C, I'm gonna change over here to Google implementation, and this one is called make, like this. All right, and so now we have provided all of the layers and somehow magically it worked, right? Obviously there are also uh, a couple of uh, helpers in there, right? So instead of from function over here, we can just succeed, right? So we don't need to do this and therefore we can also succeed over here, right? Like that, okay? And obviously there is already a layer for the console, okay? So instead of this, I'm gonna say live and I'm actually gonna leave it inside, check it out. Z, Z layer warning, you have provided more than is required. You may remove the following layer. How freaking awesome is this, okay? So I'm actually gonna remove this, right? And now everything is fine. And now we're gonna go and create uh, these helpers as well, right? So I'm just gonna copy this line and I'm gonna go to uh, controller implementation. What is this file? Let me actually close this one, okay? So controller implementation, and over here where we have, you know, make, I'm just gonna say uh, lazy val live, I'm just gonna paste it in, okay? And uh, because we are inside of this control implementation, I can actually do um, this as well, right? And as a reminder, like in Scala 2, you would need to do, you know, an underscore over here. And also another, by the way, um, in, uh, you know, like this is called a service pattern. And from all the videos that I have seen about Zio2, uh, what they do is they, they don't do like a, uh, a make over here. They, they go with a case class and the reasoning uh, for the case class, uh, something like this, you know, something like this and uh, uh, like this, right? And so the the uh, reasoning for this is that a case class comes in, you know, with the dot apply function, right? I have no idea what I just pressed. This was not my intention. The idea is that like there's an implementation dot apply, okay? And so you would go like uh, implementation dot apply. I actually don't know why, like uh, I, I really prefer this pattern. It was kind of popularized, uh, you know, with Tegless Final and stuff because, you know, you, you we always needed like only one instance of the class anyway. So yeah, so now like all of the types are inferred, so we can uh, literally just uh, copy this, okay? Go to the boundary implementation and just like paste it in, you know, without changing it at all. Um, okay, over here we actually need to import zero because until now we did not need it anyway because all of the types were inferred for us, okay? And the Google implementation is the same thing, right? It's just that over here instead of from function, we're just gonna succeed. Right, because it's already a lazy val, so there's no need for anything else. All right, and therefore we can go back to the to the eye, and I'm just gonna do this over here, over here, and uh, uh, like this, like this, uh, like this, and I'm just gonna find make, and I'm gonna change go next to live, and I'm gonna do this with these two as well. Okay, so there we go. Like this is how you now uh, construct applications. Right, so instead of doing this whole thing manually. Right, so instead of figuring out the dependency graph manual, even though it's a tiny dependency graph, if you kind of like think about it, like I never had a problem with constructors, but now that I'm looking at this, right, like how how tiny the changes were that we needed to make, they're basically not existent, right? We didn't have to like rewrite anything. We like added like a tiny like helper with this live thing, and I was just using it like this. And by the way, like the result of this, right? I don't remember if I changed it, right? I think I did, right? Oh no, I didn't change it, right? So. Um, so it literally works exactly the same, right? False and true, right? Because the types are exactly the same, right? So this one is a Z of any nothing controller, and this one is a Z of any nothing controller.
again, like, I don't really have a problem with constructors, right? I never had a problem with constructors. But I have to admit that this is very sexy, right? Like, if you kind of like, it's sort of like uh, manual transmission in a car, right? It's like, it has existed for so many years, and, and many of us, like, like to drive. So uh, the first time we encounter, like, automatic transmission, we're kind of, like, opposed to the idea, right? But if you, if you can kind of, like, imagine the world where automatic transmission was there before the manual transmission, then this conversation would be very, very different, right? It would look like manual, like, who wants manual, right? So this is exactly how I feel right now. Even though, like, this is not a big deal, like, all, most of my dependency graphs because I assemble every use case separately. Like for me, it's really not a big deal to assemble a, a tiny dependency graph like this. But this is just like my sexy. Like you kind of think, if you think about it, like why would you do this manually if the compiler can do this for you? And by the way, like this is where we really see that uh, Scala is a really scalable language, right? If a library, you know, Granted, it was macros and some, some magic in there, right? If a library can add such functionality to the language, like this is really sick. And it actually gets better. Check this out. If we go and add a tiny thing over here, right? Called a Z layer debug. And there's two versions. One of them is just a tree, which prints out this tree was like really pretty colors. It essentially shows you that it figured out exactly this. It says, okay, you have a controller. Right? And it needs two things. It needs the boundary implementation live and it needs the console live. Right? It's exactly the same thing. Right? And the boundary needs the Google implementation. So it's figure out this thing for you. So you didn't even have to do this. Right? Well, one tiny thing to know about this is that it's it's implemented uh, at, at macros, right? At compile time. So the way you get this report is as a compilation error, right? So there is no error here, right? It's just that, you know, it's been done in such a way that it actually, you know. Uh, prevents you from compiling your code, okay? And another version of this, you cannot have both because um, the way it's done is that this version contains the tree and another thing, okay? So if you go with mermaid, then, you know, you have this tree, right? Same as before, but you also have this link to Mermaid. Mermaid is a service that I've actually never played around with until I started playing with this. Uh, and apparently it's a service or also a, like a live editor for, you know, creating your own graphs. And so Zio kind of exports it for you to use. It uses the Mermaid's API and it essentially gives you this beautiful graph. And you can also like click on the view over here and, uh, you know, go to full screen, like zoom a little bit and you have like this beautiful graph. Uh, you can also export pictures and, and whatnot. Technically this doesn't have anything to do with Zio, but uh, for some reason they they chose to go with this, and uh, and it's kind of neat. Uh, again, like this whole thing only works when uh, your dependency graph is already assembled uh, correctly. Let me actually uh, go like this. If it's already assembled correctly, then you know it's going to prevent you from compiling, uh, but it's going to give you this. Uh, let's actually remove this real quick. All right, so this is pretty much everything that I wanted to show you today. Uh, I just uh, stumbled on a couple of uh, either bugs or limitations. I'm actually not really sure, so I'm going to show you a couple of them. So the first one is, um, if you think about it, uh, you should not probably create this console live inside of here, right? I mean, we're kind of not creating it because it's an object, but imagine that this was like a database connection or something, right? So the proper way would be to go over here, right, and make this a dev, okay, and say over here that, you know, we're going to need a console, right? And so we're going to uh, inject the console over here. Again, imagine that this was something like a, a session pool for, you know, your, your connection pool to the database, right? You instantiated it, you know, once over here in the program, and then you pass it pass it into each use case, okay? So the way this works over here is pretty much the same as it worked in, um, you know, in Z01. You say provide some instead of provide, and then the way this works is that you say basically what you're not going to provide. Okay, so we're basically going to say, well, I'm not going to provide the console, and therefore you're going to remove it from here, okay? And therefore it's going to start to cry uh, over here in the program. So it's going to say, uh, I'm not sure why Mattels doesn't show anything over here because the error uh, message is, oh, it's actually in main. Why is it in main? Okay, Mattels doesn't show here uh, anything either. So uh, let's actually do this real quick. And anyway, this is very beautiful, right? Your effect requires a service that is not in the environment. Please provide a layer for the following type, Zio console. Call your effects provide method with the layers you need. You can read more about layers and providing services here, over there, uh, which I actually haven't read. <laughs> I actually probably should should read this, uh, but probably this is still the uh, all documentation. In any case, so over here, uh, we simply need to go and say provide, right? Again, was an empty one. Right, and so uh, over here, it's going to say, uh, "Why did it? Oh, it, it died because I killed the server." Okay, so now same as before, it says, "Hey, you don't provide the console," and so you're just going to go like this: console dot live, console dot live, like this. And in fact, we can uh, go over here and uh, and, and go like this. Okay, uh, yeah. So I need to import Zio here as well, right? Because like before, I didn't need it. Now I do. So there we go. Okay. And because, uh, you know, if you have seen, like, I believe it was the fourth video in my Zio playlist, uh, you have seen that because you're like, 
turning dependency injection kind of like on its head because you're dealing like now with functions, right? You know, kind of like a read them on it. Uh, you actually have this flexibility that you can uh, provide layers later, right? So you can like, for example, change these two parts and it's still going to be fine, right? Like all the types will be figured out for you, right? So um, let's actually revert this real quick. So what I wanted to show you is that, you know, this whole macros was like this pre-printing of the tree. It obviously sees only this call to provide, okay? So which, which means that if you go like this, you know, debug, for example, tree, it's only going to say, well, there's only console, okay? And the same, the same way as uh, if you go over here, right? So you go like this, debug that tree, Right, so now it's only going to show you like this part, and this part is not you know pretty anymore, right? Because you know it's it's not going to figure it out, right? So it's not like it died or anything, right? Uh, however, uh, there are characters over here that Mermaid doesn't like, right? Which I'm sure that is just uh, like a limitation. I'm sure they can like uh, mangle the the names a little bit uh, so that it looks uh, looks better. So I did like an alt click. Uh, and it probably, yeah, it opened behind the scenes, but as you can see, like it doesn't like something over here. And I'm not familiar with Mermaid, but it doesn't, somehow it doesn't allow me to like change things here. I don't know what I need to press uh, for it to allow me to change things, but I cannot like fix it. So essentially it probably doesn't like like uh, this curly, uh, you know, this per, uh, param or, you know, or this param. No idea. Uh, let's go back to the code. Actually, one thing that I forgot to mention is that because it can kind of like uh, switch places over here, it also means that, you know, you could totally remove this from here. Right, and then go over here, right, and edit up here, right. So you can go like flatmap that run. Obviously, the types change, but it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, I should also remove this one. Okay, so the types change, but it doesn't really matter. And therefore, uh, there's also a helper which used to be called Access M. Over here, there is a service with Zio, right. And the way it works is that you know you you give it a function that now you know has the service and then can do run. So it's going to pretty much do this flatmap for you. Okay, so uh, the type over here is now Zio that you know produces a unit, you know, because we did this whole like you know flat map once. The same, pretty much the same as before, right? So it's the same as um, as was this flat map, right? So it's still like Zio unit, but before it was Zio that would return just the service, just the control. By the way, like one of the selling points for Zio is that the type inference is great, but sometimes uh, you know it kind of works against you, okay? Because for example over here, right? So uh, what I just what we just did was this. Right, and so the type over here is now you know zero that produces a unit. However, there's also another helper that does not have the zero part, right? And look, it's kind of, everything is going to compile, right? But now like this make produces a zero that has you know a zero inside. Okay, so uh, you know you kind of need to flatten, right? But like the types are not going to tell you this. In any case, let's revert all of that stuff. This is how I want to have it, uh, probably without mermaid. And therefore, over here, we need to uncomment this out like this. Another sort of like, um, again, it's probably like just a limitation. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a bug. I don't even actually know how to explain it to you. So uh, if you go to my boundary implementation, usually uh, my boundary implementation uh, requires multiple things. And I prefer to use a facade to uh, pass on all of these things. In fact, uh, passing multiple things is not... The real problem that I'm trying to solve here. The real problem is that when I'm writing my test, I want to fake one thing instead of a bunch of different things. Now over here, it's kind of it's kind of uh, gonna look silly because we have only one thing, which is Google. Okay, but imagine that this, that this was like five or six things. Okay, so usually I call it gate, right? And so I'm gonna call it gate as well over here, right? By the way, this whole thing is gonna be on GitHub, uh, but without this gate thing. Okay, so it's gonna be gate. But as of right now, obviously gate doesn't exist. So if I go to Google implementation. I've done this like so many times that you know, I kind of I can kind of do this um, uh, from the back of my head. In fact, uh, we should not need to go to the Google implementation. We need to go to Google, okay? And we're gonna say that uh, this is gonna be gate, which is gonna be my facade, you know, and it's gonna do like extends and like all of these like parts, right? Uh, as of right now, there's only one part, right? It's it's only like this, okay? And then I would do something like you know object gate, okay? And inside of it, I'm gonna have def make, right? Uh, which is gonna you know uh, take the Google. Right, it's just a facade, right? And it's going to produce a gate, right? So it would take like all of these uh, instances, right? And notice that this one is abstract, right? So I don't know which one, right? But it has to be Google, okay? And how is it going to do this? Well, it's going to do new. The type is going to be inferred for you. And because we're in Scala 3, I can just do export Google uh, star like this. If you're not familiar with Scala 3, like this thing uh, pretty much is going to do uh, override, uh, uh, you know, whatever, def. Um, maybe, maybe actually... Uh, yeah, Metal was actually capable of helping me over here, right? So it's gonna do it's gonna do this for me, right? So this one line is pretty go it's pretty much going to import like all of the methods for me, okay? Well, actually to export, okay? So this is the thing, okay? Uh, but now like if we go to DI, 
and we should probably uh, go like this, right? First of all, like this is the one for the uh, for the constructor. Here. And actually, I have no idea where are my diagnostics. There we go. Th these are my diagnostics. Okay. So uh, basically, the boundary imp implementation is going to require a facade, right? So we're going to do like git at make, and the only thing that it needs is actually just the uh, just the Google. Okay. So it's going to be like this. So everything here is not fine. It's just that uh, metal is still not happy. But it's not happy. It's it's unhappy actually at the bottom. So this is again a diagnostic that was not cleared. I don't know. Maybe I'm typing too fast or something like this. Like why is it not clearly clearing? No idea. Let's do this. Let's do that. I really have no idea. Okay. But it it totally compiles. Uh, let's actually reload this real quick just in case. I really don't know why it's such a big deal to clear the diagnostics. And I don't know if it's a metals issue or if it's a VS Code issue. Going back to the terminal. Uh, it reloaded it for me. So over here now it says, well, now we need the gate. And if you go like this and you go gate dot and actually forgot to include it. So I'm going to call it facade, right? Because I can't know that it's a live thing because uh, because make, uh, where was it? Because make over here requires an abstract Google, right? So it could be a fake Google that is injected, okay? So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to call it lazy well facade, which is like the best name that I could come up with. So we're just going to go like this, Z layer succeed with make, right? But again, we don't know which one, right? Because it could be abstract, okay? And so now, uh, let me just scroll down over here. Uh, oh yeah, blooper started, so it kind of died, okay? So now if I go over here and if I save this, it's gonna be happy. Uh, I believe it should have been happy. Um, what does it say? Uh, required by boundary live. Yeah, maybe like this is the issue. So the facade needs to come like before the Google implementation. So if I just switch these two lines, okay, I'm doing something wrong. Oh yeah, I remember. I actually did exactly the same thing when I was preparing this video. I kind of remember that like Google implementation just to make, like this is another thing where, you know, the types are being inferred for you, okay? So this is actually from function, right? Fun function, like this. This is the bug that I wanted to show you. So as you can see over here, it says circular dependency detected. First of all, how freaking sick is it that it can do this circular dependency detected, right? It's just that in this case, it is actually not a circular dependency. Um, or maybe I'm wrong, because if you just go and switch them like this, then it's fine, okay? So this is just like uh, one of those things. Uh, over here, again, if we go like debug, uh, debug.tree, like this, it's gonna look pretty awesome, right? Pretty much, okay, you have a facade, but you know, it requires only one thing. This print line is just so beautiful. Like, it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's just me who likes colors. Like, I always like colors. I, I always use colors in my videos, you know, but like this, this looks like really, really amazing, okay? And, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, just because we're having fun, I'm also going to show it to you with Mermaid. Uh, but again, we cannot do uh, this thing with Mermaid. So uh, I will need to go um, uh, basically like this, and therefore we don't need to provide anything over here. Okay, so, uh, oh yeah, we also need to do to the console. And, and this is another thing, right? You can just throw it in somewhere. It really doesn't matter where, okay? And so now we have Mermaid, we click on it, behind the scenes, it opens over here, and there we go, okay? So uh, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. So as you can see, the control needs a boundary, the boundary needs a facade, and usually I have like multiple things over here. This is a facade for only one thing, right? This is extremely pleasant to um, to look at, right? So let's go back to uh, our code. All right, now there's a ton of cool stuff that is coming out in ZO2, and I might actually cover some parts of it. So you might want to subscribe and also click that bell if you want to be annoyed every time I make a video. As I already mentioned, it also works in Scala 2. Modular, a couple of bugs, like uh, this thing actually didn't print out anything. It didn't fail a compilation. Uh, I don't know if it's a limitation because, you know, there's like no proper inlining in Scala 2 uh, or if it's just a bug. Uh, hopefully it's just a bug. Uh, it, it works, everything here that I've shown you works exactly the same in Scala 2. Uh, modular this thing that, uh, you know, you have to do make and then underscore. In any case, I just really wanted to show this to you because ZO2 seems like it's gonna kick some serious ass. And by the way, don't forget that all of this code is going to be on GitHub, so make sure to check the description below. By the way, there is also a web app the, that uh, tracks the uh, current status of the entire Zio ecosystem, whether they're up to date with the latest uh, Zio release. And it's under zioecosystem.heroku.app, right, over here. Uh, so zio-ecosystem.herokuapp.com. Uh, as you can see over here, it says, okay, total tracked projects is 70 and up-to-date projects is 
41, so more than half of the projects are up to date. You can kind of scroll around here. You can uh, click on, on them, you know, see some stuff over here. I haven't played around with it much, but uh, the point is that it's been tracked, it's been on course, and it's going to be awesome. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'm going to see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's Mubad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to support tech education, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.